Hello, and welcome to the MathWorks webinar entitled Acquiring Data from Sensors and Instruments Using MATLAB. My name is Eric Wetchin, and I work on the test and measurement team here at the MathWorks. Following the presentation, my colleagues and I will have time to take questions, so please submit your questions using the Q&A WebEx interface at any time during the presentation. We will address as many questions as we can at the end of the presentation. Here is the agenda for today's presentation. First, we are going to talk about why you would acquire data with MATLAB. And then we are going to provide an overview of the different data access options available to you from MATLAB. And then there will be a number of demos. We'll start with a demo showing you how you can analyze live audio data. And then we will get into how you can work with sensors. And we will show demos of how you can acquire data from a thermocouple, an accelerometer, and a wireless Bluetooth temperature sensor. Next, we will talk about how you can work with counter timers and digital I.O. on your data acquisition hardware. And finally, we will conclude with showing how you can acquire data from standalone instruments such as oscilloscopes. So to start out, I'd like to talk a little bit about a typical technical computing workflow that you will see when you're using MATLAB. Very often, you need to access your data from some type of a file or other software environment or from real hardware. The focus of today's presentation is going to be accessing data from hardware and sensors. So you'll see we will be focusing here at the bottom left of the screen. Once you have your data in MATLAB, typically you're using MATLAB to explore that data. So you may be doing some data analysis with the data, you may be visualizing the data, plotting the data, or you may actually be building an application uh, using that data. And then finally, you may need to share your data with your colleagues. So you may need to write a report, or you may need to deploy an application that you've written to users who don't have MATLAB. And to make this all easier, once you have acquired the data in MATLAB, you can automate this process so that once you've written the code or you've uh, acquired the data, you can automate that process uh, for future. OK, let's talk about how MATLAB can connect to your hardware. So there are several different options and several different specialty toolboxes that allow MATLAB to connect to your hardware. Um, the first one is called the Data Acquisition Toolbox. Um, as the name might suggest, this allows you to acquire data from data acquisition boards um, and modules. And we'll talk um, in quite a bit of detail about this. And most of the demonstrations that you'll see today um, are using the Data Acquisition Toolbox. And this is how you actually will acquire data from a sensor, uh, is using the Data Acquisition Toolbox. Um, another toolbox that we have to allow you to access your data is the Instrument Control Toolbox. As the name suggests, the Instrument Control Toolbox lets you acquire data from standalone instruments, and we'll show some demonstrations of that. We also have an Image Acquisition Toolbox that allows you to access data from webcams and frame grabbers. And there's a Vehicle Network Toolbox if you're working um, in the automotive industry, typically, and you need to access uh, or send and receive messages uh, from the CAN bus. So the Vehicle Network Toolbox allows you to do that. And then finally, MATLAB, uh, being a universal programming environment, can allow you to access other things for which there is no specialty toolbox. OK, let's talk a little bit more about the Data Acquisition Toolbox. So what kind of hardware is supported by the Data Acquisition Toolbox? Data Acquisition Toolbox supports hardware from a number of vendors, including National Instruments, Data Translation, Advantech, and many others that you see here. The type of hardware we're talking about here typically plugs directly into your computer. Or, um, so for example, it could plug into uh, a PXI uh, Express chassis. It could plug into the PCI backplane of the computer. Or it could uh, connect to the computer over a USB cable. So there's a couple of different varieties of hardware that would work uh, with the Data Acquisition Toolbox. And the Data Acquisition Toolbox also supports Windows-compatible sound cards. So let's jump into MATLAB and show a demonstration of what you might do once you have your data in MATLAB that you've acquired. And for this first demonstration, we're going to talk about acquiring data from a sound card. So I'm going to go into MATLAB. And I'm going to show you a demo that shows you the frequency spectrum of my voice as I'm speaking. So we're using the sound card and the microphone of the laptop here in the studio. And as you can see, as I am speaking, we are looking at the 
um, the first uh, plot on the top is showing the input voltage uh, that the microphone is seeing, and it's showing you about 5,000 points of data. And this is a live recording. So as I talk, if I clap, for example, you will, you will see that there's um, a reaction from the microphone. The, the signal strength gets stronger. So this is how you can actually get live data and visualize the live data in, in, in the MATLAB environment. Now on the bottom of the screen, you'll notice we're doing some basic analysis. Um, you'll see that is actually a frequency spectrum, and it's taking the frequency spectrum of the, of the voice data that's being collected by the microphone. So if I whistle, you'll notice a spike around 0.1 on the x-axis of the plot on the bottom of the screen there in the window. And the units here are actually 10 to the 4th hertz. So uh, that's showing that my whistle was approximately 1,000 hertz. And so here you're taking, uh, basically what we're doing is in MATLAB, we're taking a Fourier transform of the collected input uh, uh, voltage from, from the microphone. So we're doing live analysis and visualization of that data. I'm going to stop that demo and go back into the presentation. That gives you an, a good uh, idea of uh, what types of things you can do once the data is in MATLAB. So the clear benefit here is that if you use a single environment like MATLAB to both acquire your data and uh, visualize and analyze the data, that will save you time having that single environment to do both your acquisition and analysis. We also showed here that we're also using a graphical user interface. Uh, we've built that in MATLAB to collect the data and, and visualize that. So that's another important feature. Now, many of you may be working with sensors, and uh, sound, obviously, microphone is one, one type of sensor, but there are many other types of sensors that you may be using. And this uh, next uh, slide here and the demos that follow uh, will show you some of the kind of the workflow that's typical for working with sensors in MATLAB. So, for example, you may have some kind of physical quantity, uh, such as a heartbeat that's uh, depicted here on this slide. Um, you need to detect that, and eventually um, you want to analyze that signal in MATLAB. So, MATLAB. so you're trying to get this uh, signal from the outside world into MATLAB where you can analyze it um, and visualize that data. So typically you'll have a sensor or transducer that's in between, uh, that's detecting the actual phenomena, and then you have some kind of hardware. Many of the demos that we'll do today will be using um, some hardware from National Instruments. Uh, the sensor or transducer basically uh, creates a voltage from the data, uh, that the uh, physical quantity that you're trying to detect. Then the hardware uh, takes that voltage and digitizes it so that it's available to the computer. And then MATLAB, and in this case, uh, in many cases here, the data acquisition toolbox allows you to work directly with that data from uh, the MATLAB environment. So what types of measurements might you be uh, working with? Temperature, pressure, flow, acceleration are just some of the types of measurements that users would be analyzing or working with from within the MATLAB environment. So again, some of the other sensor types, thermocouple, strain gauge, accelerometer, flow rate sensors uh, are typically used. And some of the common tasks that you will do and what, and what we'll demonstrate shortly is you may need to browse for your connected data acquisition hardware, set up the acquisition parameters, and then you need to uh, decide if you want to collect the data in the foreground or in the background. So in the foreground, you would actually be blocking MATLAB, uh, and in the background, you would be collecting and doing something at the same time. So the data acquisition toolbox uh, enables both of those workflows uh, depending on what you're trying to do with your data. And then finally, of course, you, once your data is in MATLAB from the sensors, then you can use the analysis and visualization capabilities of MATLAB to look at that data. And one of the things that I didn't mention so far is uh, another possible use of the data from the sensors might be for process control. So in some cases, you may be using uh, 4 to 20 milliamp transmitters and receivers um, in some type of a feedback loop to control some kind of a process variable, uh, such as temperature. And the data acquisition toolbox uh, enables that type of workflow as well. OK, a couple of more words about the data acquisition toolbox um, before we jump into the demonstrations. So what kind of hardware, a typical question you might uh, ask is, what kind of hardware can I use with the data acquisition toolbox? On an earlier slide, we talked about some of the vendors of the hardware. And certainly, there is a support hardware page where you can see all the, the vendors that are supported by the toolbox. Uh, but in general, um, we support a variety of uh, data acquisition boards and USB modules. And in terms of the, the key features, uh, the toolbox allows you to work with analog input analog output, counters, timers, and digital I.O. on these data acquisition cards. And because of that, we also provide direct access to 
different types of measurements that this hardware supports. So that could be could be a voltage, it could be a current, or in some cases, EEP accelerometer, thermocouple. These are other specialty measurements that the toolbox supports. So what's new in the latest versions of Data Acquisition Toolbox? The first item you will note is that we have two interfaces to connect to your data acquisition hardware. There is a legacy interface and a session-based interface. The demo I showed you earlier with the sound card used the legacy interface. Several of the demos we will be showing shortly use the session-based interface. One of the advantages of the session-based interface is the support for a lot of specialty measurements such as EEP accelerometer, bridge-based sensors, thermocouples, as well as access to counter timers on your data acquisition hardware. Having access to these specialty measurements and subsystems means that you can work with hardware that is designed for those types of measurements rather than having to build up the signal conditioning circuitry yourself. This slide here highlights the differences in the task you can perform using the legacy interface and the session interface. You can see here that multi-vendor support is provided by the legacy interface. There are approximately 15 different vendors of data acquisition hardware that you can use with the legacy interface. And sound card support is also currently offered with the legacy interface. The session-based interface, on the other hand, is designed currently for National Instruments hardware and allows you to access the counter timer subsystems as well as work on 64-bit MATLAB. And in addition, it allows you direct access to EEP accelerometer, bridge, and thermocouple measurements. With the legacy interface, you can also work with these type of measurements, but as I mentioned earlier, you may be required to build the circuitry yourself rather than use the signal conditioning circuitry that is provided by the data acquisition card. Okay, let's jump back into MATLAB, and I'm going to show you a demonstration of how you can acquire data from thermocouples. Okay. So, I have a demo here called Demo Thermocouple that I'm going to step through to show you how you can actually acquire uh, data from a thermocouple. So, just so you know what the setup I have here is, I'm using a uh, compact DAC chassis from National Instruments, and I'm using a National Instruments 9211 module um, that's plugged into this, this chassis. So, the, the first part of the, uh, this, and this module is actually designed for thermocouple measurements. So, the first cell that I'm going to evaluate here, I'm going to use uh, cell mode to evaluate um, this first cell, which allows me to actually identify the hardware that's available. So when I do DAC.getDevices, you will see that I, this shows me all the data acquisition devices that are currently connected to my computer. And you'll see I have two compact DAC chassis, um, each with three different modules plugged in. Um, there's one called Compact DAC 1, and another one called Compact DAC 3. And I'm going to actually be working with Compact DAC 3 chassis today. And then there's a couple of other um, instruments um, as well, or sorry, uh, data acquisition cards that are also plugged in. OK, so if I want to acquire data, the first thing I need to do um, is I need to create a session. And I need to create a session specifying the vendor. So I'm, since I'm using National Instruments hardware, I'm going to create a session using National Instruments hardware using the command DAC.createSession. And you'll see, once I've created the session, it's kind of, it defaults to um, a scan rate of 1,000 scans, and it tells me that no channels have been added. So there are multiple channels on this particular uh, device, and I'm only using the, the first channel. So I need to actually add um, the type of channel that I want to measure from this uh, 9211 device. The way I do that is I add an analog input channel to the session. Uh, I specify that it's a CDAC 3 mod 1, that's, that's the uh, 92.11, uh, that I would like to work with, and I'm adding channel 0, and then I'm also specifying that this is a thermocouple channel. So let's do that. You'll see now that the uh, data acquisition session tells me um, that I have a uh, CDAC 3 mod 1 uh, as analog input channel 0 of, of type uh, thermocouple. And what I've also done is I've changed the rate to four. So this means now I'm doing four samples per second, and I've set the duration of the session to three seconds. So I'm going to basically collect data at a rate of four samples per second for three seconds. Now, many of the, the channel properties can be uh, configured in MATLAB so that you can set them up. So this, uh, this next command here, where 
allows me to look at channel one, which is the only channel that I currently have connected, and it allows me to set the properties of that channel. So if I evaluate that, you'll see that it shows um, the different parameters that can be configured here. I can look at, I can change units, I can change the thermocouple type, and um, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to set the thermocouple type to K, and I'm going to set the units to Celsius. So this next uh, line of code here changes the thermocouple uh, type to K, which is the type I have plugged in, and ch changes the units to Celsius. So if I evaluate that, you'll see, and then I show you what happened, you will see that uh, now the range is from minus 200 to 1250 degrees Celsius. So now I'm ready to go. Now I actually want, I'm ready to start my acquisition. So I use the start foreground command, which is part of the session-based interface, and I will start collecting my data. So let's evaluate that. And then you will see that I've now collected three seconds of data, and it shows me the temperature in uh, degrees Celsius. So suppose we wanted to look at the uh, temperature in degrees uh, Fahrenheit. What we can do is we can go back into our uh, function here that we've that uh, allows the command that allows us to change the uh, units, and we can go type Fahrenheit. And then I'll save that. And this time, I'm going to run the entire demo while I'm holding the thermocouple. And you'll see here that uh, in figure one, we now have uh, temperature is, is being read in uh, degrees Fahrenheit, and you can see the temperature is increasing um, as I was holding my hand on the thermocouple. Okay, so let's close that demo and return to the presentation. So you see, using MATLAB, you can acquire data from the thermocouples without any need for data conversion. So there's no lookup tables here. We're, we're getting the data directly from the data acquisition device. Uh, you can collect the, the data in units of your choice, and um, you can use either background or foreground acquisition. In this demonstration here, we used uh, foreground acquisition because we just collected three seconds worth of data. Okay, next we're going to talk a little bit of how you might um, acquire data from accelerometers. So many of you may be working with EAP sensors, and these are, this is, EAP is the industry standard uh, for accelerometers. It stands for Integrated Electronics Piezoelectric. Um, and what you are typically doing with EAP accelerometers is you need to supply a constant current source while you're acquiring the data. So there is hardware out there that does this for you, so you, it'll automatically uh, supply this current source while you're collecting the data. So we're going to work with a sensor from uh, PCB, and this shows you a little bit of an excerpt of the data sheet there, uh, of this accelerometer. Um, we're going to collect data from this uh, accelerometer, which is actually sitting on the table here next to my computer. Okay, I'm going to jump back into uh, MATLAB. And uh, similar to what we did with the uh, thermocouple, we're going to start out by uh, creating a session using the National Instruments hardware. So that's this first step here. Then we're going to add an analog input channel. And you see here what we do is we add um, CDAC 3 mod 3, because in this case, um, I'm going to be using a different device. So let me show you here. I did DAC.getDevices. And uh, the module that I'm going to be using for the uh, accelerometer measurements is the NI9234. So that's actually CDAC3 mod 3 here. And this is a module capable of voltage and uh, EAP uh, measurements. So what we'll do is we will run this and collect. Um, we're going to uh, set the uh, rate to 2,048 samples per second. And we're going to collect 20 seconds of data. So similar to what we did with the thermocouple, we're setting the rate and the duration in seconds after we've added the type of channel that we're interested in. And then one of the things you have to do with the thermocouple is we have to actually uh, set the sensitivity. So what, to do that, what you do is you evaluate the channel's property, and you set the sensitivity to the sensitivity you find in the data sheet. This way, you'll actually get your um, answer back in the engineering units, um, in this case, gravities. Okay, so let's walk through the code um, using cell mode. 
So first we'll create the session. MATLAB gives me a warning saying uh, that this uh, type of data acquisition hardware only supports um, certain um, functions. And that's, that's fine because we're only using the functions that are, are supported. Um, and then um, we've added the channel, the, the input channel. Next we want to do is we want to change the rate and change the duration in seconds. And now you see it tells us that the data acquisition session will run for 20 seconds at 2048 scans per second. And it tells me that I have one channel of type uh, accelerometer since I set the analog input channel to type accelerometer. And it tells me the range um, of that accelerometer. Now we haven't set the sensitivity yet. So let's um, execute this block here, which sets the sensitivity. And now, um, so to do that, we use the channels property of the session. And we look at channel 1, and we uh, assign the sensitivity to uh, the value that we uh, see in the data sheet. And now you'll see when we look at the data acquisition uh, session uh, channel information about channel 1, uh, tells us that we have this analog input accelerometer channel, AI0, on the CDAC 3 mod 3. Sensitivity uh, looks to be correct as we set it. Tells us the excitation current is at 2 milliamps. So this is the IEPE uh, excitation current. Um, if we needed to change that, we could um, change that property as well. And it now tells us that the range is minus 542 to 542 uh, gravities. So uh, now we're getting units uh, in the correct units for um, measuring acceleration. So now it looks like we're pretty much ready to go. So what we want to do is um, use the start foreground uh, operation to collect this data. So I'm going to collect 20 seconds uh, worth of data uh, and plot that data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate this cell and collect data from the accelerometer. So to make this interesting, I'm going to uh, tap uh, near my accelerometer, which is mounted on the table, so we can actually see some something come out. So let me ev evaluate that cell. And I'll knock here. I'm knocking a little bit harder, and then not so hard, a little bit further away from where this is mounted, a little bit faster, and then a little bit slower. And we should probably have about 20 seconds worth of data now. There we go. You see the figure just popped up. Uh, and there you can see um, this represents uh, the data that we've acquired from uh, the accelerometer. So 20 seconds worth of data. And you can see the various spikes um, uh, as I was tapping uh, on the table where this accelerometer was mounted. So of course, the typical application here um, would be maybe for um, some kind of a noise and vibration where the accelerometer might be mounted on um, some part that you wanted to measure uh, the effects of uh, vibration. OK. So um, and of course, if you wanted to change the, uh, the uh, data acquisition rate, you could just go in uh, back into the code and change it, say, to uh, collect 10 seconds worth of data. Or you could uh, change the number of samples by adjusting uh, the uh, acquisition rate from 2048 to some higher number that's supported by uh, the card that you have. OK, let's jump back into um, the uh, presentation and continue. Um, the next demonstration we're going to show is um, how you would acquire data from a wireless sensor. So uh, many of you may be using uh, wireless sensors. Uh, this particular sensor that we're going to use uh, today is a Bluetooth uh, wireless uh, temperature sensor. Um, and so it communicates uh, using the Bluetooth protocol. And I have Bluetooth in my uh, computer here in, in the studio. Uh, and the device is sitting across the room, um, just plugged in from a power standpoint, but not otherwise connected to the computer. And what we're going to do is we're going to, um, this time, uh, we're going to be using uh, Instrument Control Toolbox, uh, which supports uh, common uh, communication protocols, uh, such as Bluetooth. And we're going to use that to collect uh, data from this particular uh, sensor. So I have a few uh, different uh, functions uh, that I've written, or um, MATLAB scripts, uh, that will allow us to talk to this Bluetooth temperature sensor. So let's go back uh, into MATLAB. And I'm going to show you a script I've written uh, called BlueScript. So let's open that in the editor. And you'll see here that um, the way this works 
is first I need to find I need to find out what um, Bluetooth devices are out there. So there's a command called I'm going to show you this Instra Hardware Info, and then I'm going to pass it Bluetooth because I'm interested in looking at Bluetooth devices that might be visible to my computer. So this is off searching for the Bluetooth devices. So while it's doing that, I'll explain a little bit about um, the very few uh, small number of lines of code that you need to actually connect to this device. So um, the first line here you'll see is um, I actually create a Bluetooth uh, device. And it says uh, the, the device name is Blue Radios MS8 BC5. So the temperature sensor device that I have is from a company called Blue Radios. And this uh, interface object is what I will use to communicate with uh, that device. So if we look back in MATLAB, you'll see that when I use the um, instrument hardware info command, which looks for uh, different uh, types of hardware that may be out there, um, we did find this Blue Radios MS8BC5 uh, device. And we'll be using that uh, to uh, communicate with it in, in MATLAB. So I'm going to execute this um, first uh, section of code here using cell mode, you'll notice that I'm actually changing the terminator. So if I want to send uh, text-based commands uh, to this device, um, I need to talk to that device uh, with the same terminator that it's expecting. So this is something you just get from the manual of the device. So it turns out that this expects to, um, when you're reading uh, from this uh, Bluetooth temperature sensor, you need a carriage return line feed. And when you're writing, you need a carriage return. So we're going to set the terminator um, after we've created our Bluetooth um, objects. So what I'll do is I will show you that by evaluating this cell. OK, so looking to back in MATLAB to see what happened here. So when I create uh, this Bluetooth object, so that was the answer from Instrument Hardware Info, you see that we have a Bluetooth object with a communication setting shown here. It shows you the remote name, shows you the terminator. Um, there's only one channel on this device, so that's the channel 1. It's represented here by the 1 that follows the uh, name of the device. Shows you it's closed because we actually haven't opened a connection yet. And shows, shows you some other um, different uh, status uh, of, the, of the device. So you can see um, the read and write status, and you can see the communication state. So that's what the Bluetooth interface uh, device uh, gives you. Now, once you have the device, what we want to do is we want to open it up, and then we want to send it a command. So the command to uh, retrieve a temperature reading is ATMTR. So this is the text-based command defined by um, the device that we're communicating with, the Bluetooth device. And this will allow me to um, collect that data. So let's collect that and see what happens. So if I evaluate that cell, you'll see that now I've got the data. So what you see here is the data is returned, and this is the format that the device returns the data. It shows me that it's 91.2 degrees, so it's quite warm here in the studio, plus uh, the temperature sensor is right on the cir uh, a circuit board, um, which is um, at 91 degrees. It also gives me some date and time information. So this is just what comes back from the device. Now, I haven't done anything with this in, in MATLAB yet to, um, for example, uh, parse out or, or get the actual information that I want. So you'll see that um, there is a um, parse temp uh, function that actually will remove the temperature value uh, from this, this string that I, that I see here. So I'm going to show you what that one does. So this is only a couple of lines of MATLAB code. And what it does is it uses the string manipulation properties available in, in base MATLAB. And it allows me to look for the F for the Fahrenheit, look for the colon, which is sent by every command from this particular device, and then just strip out uh, the temperature value. So we use that in the next um, uh, script that I'm going to show you, which is called My Bluetooth Plot. So I'm going to now open My Bluetooth Plot. Now, this is a slightly longer program, but still only about 10, 15 lines. And what this does is uses the blue script um, script that I showed you just earlier and allows you to set the data collection rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my um, interval to uh, 3 seconds, and I'm going to take 11 readings. So I'm going to get the temperature read reading using that blue script. Then I'm going to uh, parse out the, uh, the temperature reading, and then I'm going to plot the result. OK, so let, now let's run um, this entire script, and let's collect um, 11 readings of, of temperature from, from this uh, Bluetooth temperature sensor. So I'm going to run this. 
And you'll see uh, the data in its uh, raw form is being echoed back in MATLAB. Plus, you see some information um, about the Bluetooth interface object. This, of course, you could suppress using standard um, semicolon uh, MATLAB uh, style to suppress the output. Um, and you'll see it's gotten through about seven or eight readings, so it's getting uh, close to the end. And then once we get to the end, we should see a plot um, come up uh, showing uh, what has happened over the past uh, 11 uh, temperature readings. So I think we're pretty close to the last reading right now. And let's see if we've got a plot. All right, here we go, figure one. And you'll see uh, the temperature is uh, fairly constant between 90 and 91 degrees. Uh, and we see 30 seconds of data um, that was collected, because remember, we were, we were doing uh, 11 readings at three samples per second. We were plotting that out. OK, so that's how you can actually collect data from a, a wireless sensor. And this one here was using Instrument uh, Control Toolbox, so a little different than the other demos where we were using uh, Data Acquisition Toolbox. OK, let me close that out. And let's uh, return back to the slideshow for a second. So uh, we showed how to acquire data from a Bluetooth uh, sensor, uh, retrieve the data, and plot the result. And it's only a few lines of code that you need to use uh, to, to do this um, from within MATLAB using Instrument Control Toolbox. OK, let's jump back to uh, Data Acquisition Toolbox again and show you one last feature of Data Acquisition Toolbox. This allows you, um, in the, the last release of uh, data acquisition toolbox, you can work with counters and timers that are on uh, your data acquisition hardware. So not all hardware has counters and timers, but there's a fair a bit of hardware out there that does have counters and timers, and uh, is now possible to access that data directly from uh, MATLAB. So what we do is we support, um, currently we support most national instrument devices that have counters. Um, and you can go to the support hardware page for, for detailed information about which devices that is. And we support access to the following uh, different types of measurements. There's edge counting. There's frequency counting. So if you want to measure the frequency of a signal that's coming in, you would use that. Um, there's pulse width counting. And that would uh, be for measuring the pulse width of some uh, pulse signal that, it, that you're feeding into your data acquisition hardware. So notice all of these are using counter input channels when you want to actually count something that's coming into your device. Um, data acquisition toolbox um, supports both input and output in that um, since you have the analog output and the counter output channel capabilities, um, you can also send data from your computer, so data that you've created in MATLAB, um, out to the outside world. And I'm going to show you a demonstration of how you can do that using the uh, pulse generation capability uh, that is uh, found on many data acquisition cards. So this is uh, creating a pulse width modulated signal using the counter channel of a data acquisition device. So this demonstration, um, again, uses Data Acquisition Toolbox. And I'm going to go back into MATLAB and show you how you can actually access these counter timers uh, from MATLAB to create a pulse width modulated signal. And then we'll change the properties of that uh, pulse width modulated signal. So I'm going to open up a demo called Counter Timer. And I'm going to step through this demo for you and show you how you can actually uh, create a counter uh, timer signal using uh, the data acquisition toolbox. So similar to the other demos with session-based interface, first you start by uh, creating a session. And then the next step is you're going to add an analog input channel. And in this case, um, the uh, device hardware we're going to use is the uh, NI9234. So this is actually to collect uh, the answer. So remember, we, we have a counter output channel, which is outputting this pulse width modulated channel. But we want to actually collect that um, and look at it in MATLAB. So we're going to use uh, two data acquisition cards in this case. We're going to use um, the card that has a, uh, the counter on it, which is the 9402 uh, from National Instruments. So this is the digital uh, I.O. device, which is capable, which has counter channels. And then we're going to collect that information using this 9234, which we recently used for uh, collecting the accelerometer uh, data. So for the first time, uh, we're going to show you how you actually would add two different channels to the session. So we start out by creating the session using the National Instruments hardware. Then we're going to add the input channel. Um, and this time, we're actually on uh, channel two of the, of the device. And this is just a, a regular voltage channel, because we want to actually see the pulse width modulated uh, channel in its voltage and how it looks. And then 
To access the counter channels, there's a special command uh, provided called add counter output channel. And this uh, happens to be uh, the counter uh, device happens to be in module four of my compact DAC chassis on, on channel zero. And we need to set it up as a pulse generator because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's several different things you can do with uh, counter input and output channels. So that's the, the basic setup. Um, and then uh, the next uh, set of commands in the next uh, cell um, allow us to actually uh, change the frequency and the duty cycle. So these are properties that are provided uh, by the um, object uh, that's associated with this channel. So you'll see that I'm going to set the frequency to 10, and I'm going to set the duty cycle to 0.75. So I'm setting a 75% duty cycle. I'm using a rate of 2,048 samples per second for output, and I'm going to output for two seconds. And you'll notice the one thing that's a little bit different, you'll, you'll see that when we look at the channel's uh, property of this um, counter channel, we're specifying uh, the second uh, channel because we remember we have two channels in this particular device. So before we just that was um, always one that we were using. Now we're actually using two because we're interested in the second channel to set up this uh, acquisition. And then finally, we have the usual three or four lines to actually plot the data. So here we're, again, we're using the start foreground command, and we are plotting the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, run this uh, script, and what we should see is um, a 75% duty cycle pulse at uh, 10 hertz. So let's run this. And I'll look from my figure window here. So you see a few things are happening in, in MATLAB, and up comes the figure window. And indeed, we do have a, um, what we, we're looking at one second of data here that we've plotted, and it does look like we have approximately 75% duty cycle here, because this is the uptime of the pulse, and this is the downtime of the pulse, and there's, there's 10 uh, pulses here in, in this time frame. So let's suppose you wanted to go uh, with a different duty cycle. We could change this um, very easily. Uh, we, do, we go back into our code um, where we have the duty cycle. We can change this. We can make it, say, 90% duty cycle. Save that and run it again. And now we should see a much higher duty cycle. And so that is evident by what we're collecting on the analog input channel. Uh, so finally, maybe you want to change the, uh, the frequency of the pulse. So that would be another thing that we could quickly do is we could go back in here and say, well, I really want to make 20 hertz type of pulse coming out of here. And I want to return back to my 75% uh, duty cycle. So I'm going to save those two changes. And I'm going to run that. And now we'll see that we have a much faster uh, PWM signal coming out, and we're back to our 75% uh, duty cycle. So we've shown how you can uh, generate the output um, from the counter output channel and then collect that same output uh, back on the an analog input channel of another DAC device. OK, so let's uh, return to the presentation. In summary, we, we showed how to generate a PWM signal. Um, typically, these could be used for motor control, but there are many other uh, different applications that they could be used for. Um, and we showed how to plot that signal. Uh, and the key takeaways here uh, is that there's only a few lines of code uh, needed um, to create these type of signals and, and uh, use them from within the MATLAB environment. OK, now I'm going to show you one more demo that uses the new digital I.O. capability of the session-based interface. What I'm going to do is show you how you can easily control a stepper motor from MATLAB. So let's jump back into MATLAB. You'll notice I have a script here called steppermotor.m, and I'm going to step through that to show you how we can control the stepper motor. You'll also notice there's a camera view um, using image acquisition toolbox here where you actually see the stepper motor uh, on the right side of your screen. And as we control the stepper motor, you will, you will see the motion uh, through the camera. So the first step uh, we will do is we want to run the section where we call dac.getDevices. And this will show you all the different devices that are connected to my computer. It so happens that the particular piece of hardware that I would like to use is in CDAC4 Mod 1. And that's the um, National Instruments uh, digital I.O. device that I will use for this demonstration. The next step will be to create a session and add a digital channel. So you can see this can be done with two lines of code. First, we create the session, and then we add the digital channel. And I'm actually adding four channels simultaneously. You'll see here port 0, line 0 through 3. 
So I've added four digital output channels. And you can see in the command window here that MATLAB is telling me that I have four digital I.O. channels for CDAC for Mod 1. And they're all set for output. If I scroll over, it says output only. So next thing you need to know is that this particular stepper motor can be controlled with four steps. So it requires four digital lines to be set uh, with certain bit patterns. And the, the patterns are shown here. So this just comes from the data sheet of the particular stepper motor. So you have 1010, 1001, 0101, and 0110. And if you issue those steps in order or apply those uh, digital voltages in order to the motor, then it will uh, turn 18 degrees uh, for this particular motor. That's the step size. So I'm going to um, first define the steps in MATLAB. So this is defining the four different steps. So I'm going to run that section of code. And then I'm going to actually step the motor uh, three different times. And you should, if you watch the camera on the right, you will see uh, that the motor should move. So let me do that. I run that section. And you saw that it moved, and actually it moved 72 degrees there because there were three steps. Now, if I want to spin the motor, um, I can run through uh, this particular, using this output single scan, which applies the uh, digital outputs to the chip that's controlling this motor. Um, I can run this uh, 50 times and the motor will spin. So there you can see um, the motor spins, and for this case, it actually spins about 10 times. So there, in only a few lines of code, uh, using the digital output command functionality of the session-based interface, uh, you can control a stepper motor. Now let's hop back into the presentation. OK, let's summarize some of the key capabilities and benefits of the data acquisition toolbox. The first benefit is you have the ability to connect to a wide variety of data acquisition hardware. And you're using a common set of commands. This means the syntax is the same no matter what hardware you are using. This makes it easier to write and maintain your code and gives you the freedom to choose the hardware that's right for your particular task. Another capability we talked about today is the ability to access data acquisition hardware capable of performing specialized measurements, such as EAP accelerometers, thermocouples, and bridge sensors. Working with this type of hardware from MATLAB simplifies the measurement setup as the signal conditioning circuitry is built into the hardware. We also showed that you can access the counter timer functionality of your data acquisition hardware, giving you full access to the capability of the data acquisition card. Although we did not demonstrate it today, the toolbox provides advanced synchronization capabilities, enabling you to easily collect data from multiple data sources. And finally, with the foreground and background acquisition capabilities, you can do live analysis of your collected data, as we showed in the sound card demonstration, where we looked at the frequency spectrum of my voice as I was collecting the data from the microphone. So next, for the last uh, demonstration, um, we're going to talk about some of the key uh, capabilities of Instrument Control Toolbox, um, which is typically used uh, when you need to talk from MATLAB with standalone uh, instruments. So these instruments could be um, function generators. They could be oscilloscopes. Um, there's a wide variety of instruments, network analyzers, uh, signal analyzers, signal generators. Um, basically, th those type of instruments that you might typically find in, in a laboratory or in a production test setting, uh, those instruments, um, you, you typically would use Instrument Control Toolbox to uh, speak with those directly from MATLAB. And some of the key features of the Instrument Control Toolbox are support for um, MATLAB instrument drivers, IVI and VXI plug and play, which are industry standard instrument drivers, as well as support for all the common uh, communication protocols. So this would be GPIB, TCPIP, Visa. Um, we showed, of course, Bluetooth. That's one of the newer ones um, that can be used directly from Instrument Control Toolbox. But the key, um, key, key thing to remember is that um, if you're working with an instrument that, has, uh, that's, that can talk over an industry standard uh, instrumentation protocol, that instrument control toolbox is how you would uh, most easily do that from MATLAB. So what kind of supported hardware are we talking about? So typically instruments from uh, some of the vendors are shown here, Agilent, Enritsu, LaCroix, Rodian, Schwartz, Tektronix. So these are the type of instruments we're talking about uh, when we're talking about uh, hardware that's supported by instrument control toolbox. So I already mentioned um, the common communi communication protocols, uh, TCP IP, Visa, and GPIB are, are, are very commonly used uh, to speak with instruments. And also serial devices um, are supported uh, through instrument uh, control toolbox. 
And uh, because we support the industry standard instrument drivers, it uh, means you don't have to write very many um, lines of code to uh, communicate with these devices. So it makes it very simple uh, to communicate and get established communication with these devices. So I'm going to show you uh, a demonstration now using an oscilloscope that I have connected to my uh, computer. So I'm going to go back into MATLAB. This time, though, I'm not going to show you any code that's been written. I'm going to show you a feature called Test and Measurement Tool, which is part of Instrument Control uh, Toolbox. So when you open Test and Measurement Tool, you see this uh, graphical user interface. And you'll see there's a, there's a hardware node on the tree here on the left. And there's an instrument objects node and an instrument driver node. And what I'm going to demonstrate is how you can collect data from a Tektronix TDS 2024 oscilloscope uh, that currently just has a square wave uh, from a probe connected to its, its channel 1. So the way you do that um, using Test and Measurement Tool is uh, I'm going to open up. I'm gonna, there's actually several ways, but I'm going to show you how to do it with a MATLAB instrument driver. So you'll see there's a, an instrument driver called Tektronix TDS 2024. So I'm going to create a device object using this driver. So I right-clicked on that driver. And these drivers are available from MATLAB Central and as well as from the vendors uh, that make the instruments. But I'm going to create a d device driver from that. And then it tells me, well, what interface do I want to use? It, it so happens that the Tektronix oscilloscope is connected to my computer using a USB cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Visa, because that's how we support USB from Instrument Control Toolbox. I'm going to use Agilent's Visa. And I am going to use um, I'm going to actually copy in the Visa string. This is the USB Visa string uh, that you can, confi can find this from something like Agilent Connection Expert. So typically, when you install your device, um, you'll have that t software running. Um, this, is the, this is the actual uh, string that MATLAB needs to identify that particular device. And then I'm going to hit OK. And you'll see what that creates is now a device object called Scope Tektronix. So this is now how MATLAB can talk to this device. And when I click on Scope Tektronix, I um, get a connect and disconnect button. So I'm going to connect to that device. And now you'll see I have three tabs, functions, properties, and session log. And under functions, you'll see there are several functions that the, uh, the driver has already uh, coded up for us. Um, since I want to read the waveform that's on the scope here, I'm going to choose Read Waveform. And you'll see it only, it's only looking for two pieces of information, input argument. Uh, the input argument that it's looking for is the channel. And this is connected to channel 1. So I'm going to pass channel 1 along to the input argument. And the output argument is the amplitude data. So I have to give it a variable. So I'm going to give it Y. Then I'm going to execute this command. And it shows me that the function has been completed successfully. And I have now have in, in, uh, in, the, in the test and measurement tool, I have a variable y that is a 2,500 points of type double. Well, let's look at that. We want to see what that data looks like. So I'm going to use the export button. And I'm going to export that. I have two choices here. I can do the MATLAB workspace or the figure window. Um, actually, I have several choices. But I'm going to actually choose the figure window so we can see exactly what we've got here. OK, so I export that. and then. You can see here that I have um, a, a square wave. This is the probe. And I've collected the 2,500 points. Um, this was just a 5-volt probe that's connected. And now that is, information is available in MATLAB. So I can do um, whatever I want with that. I can do further analysis and visualization of that data. So if we go look again uh, back at uh, Test and Measurement Tool, um, let me disconnect from that uh, device. But in addition to the functions that are, that are available, you also have properties. So here from the properties, you can view the different uh, settings that you can change on, on the oscilloscope. And then there's an important uh, tab here called Session Log. And this actually shows you the MATLAB code um, that is provided for you um, when you're doing those different clicks that we did to uh, collect the data. So, this code here is available for you to use as a reference to write um, larger uh, programs, but it shows you how you connected to that instrument. So without writing any code, um, we actually have the MATLAB code that's uh, behind the scenes that can be used uh, to communicate with this device. So in addition to uh, communicating over the uh, to the instrument over the instrument driver, you could also communicate directly uh, to the instrument 
using um, the interface object. So this is basically sending commands directly over uh, the USB uh, cable. So I can connect to the instrument, and I could send it a command like star IDN, which basically tells uh, the instrument to identify itself. So if I do that and I hit query, then you'll see that it's telling me that the instrument connected is the Tektronix TDS-2024B. Um, so similarly, here I'm not using a driver, but I'm just uh, connecting uh, directly to the device and I'm sending the Skippy or text-based commands that are available uh, for that device. Uh, so we showed this uh, with uh, an oscilloscope, but this is true for any uh, of the instruments that you can work with from Instrument Control Toolbox. Okay, so let's uh, return uh, to the presentation. So just to summarize there, um, with test and measurement tool provided by Instrument Control uh, Toolbox, um, we have the ability to, without writing any code, um, collect uh, data from an oscilloscope or another instrument and export that data directly into the MATLAB workspace. Um, some of the key features here is we can view driver properties and driver functions. We can create those device objects and, and the interface objects and work with them directly from within the tool. We can view the connected hardware um, and we can do quite a bit without actually having to write any uh, MATLAB code at all. And then finally, um, we can create the MATLAB code automatically using the session log tab that's provided by uh, the toolbox. So these are all important features of instrument uh, control toolbox when, when working with instruments. Okay, so what's new in the latest version of instrument control toolbox? One of the main features is the ability to connect to a device over Bluetooth, as I demonstrated earlier when we were communicating with the Bluetooth temperature sensor. We have also added support for the I2C protocol, which is a chip-to-chip -chip communication standard. With I2C support, you can open connections with individual chips on a circuit board and read and write data over those connections directly from MATLAB. Lastly, we have expanded our Quick Control instrument family, and it now includes Quick Control oscilloscope and Quick Control function generator objects. Although I did not demonstrate this in a live demo today, you can see here that the Quick control objects allow you to connect to an instrument using only a small number of lines of code. This is a good option for people who are not familiar with IVI drivers or the Skippy command set for an instrument. The quick control objects expose commonly used functionality so that you can perform basic instrument control faster. We are going to conclude here with some of the key capabilities and benefits of Instrument Control Toolbox. So typically, Instrument Control Toolbox is used to verify designs and build test systems. For example, you may have a prototype design that you built up and you want to actually connect that up and analyze the data in MATLAB. And you have your instruments connected to the prototype board. You can do this all in the same environment by using the Instrument Control Toolbox to control and acquire data from your instruments. Since you can easily connect to your hardware without leaving MATLAB, you can see that using a single environment provides good time savings. And finally, another capability of Instrument Control Toolbox is to connect to remote software applications. Because the TCP IP command is within Instrument Control Toolbox, you can work with data collected from remote applications using TCP IP, so it's not strictly an instrument that you would be communicating with in this case. But the Toolbox provides the capability to connect to remote software applications as well. OK, so to summarize um, today's presentation, We've shown that there are a number of ways that you can acquire data from sensors and instruments, um, primarily through data acquisition uh, and instrument control toolboxes, um, as well as image acquisition and uh, vehicle network toolbox, which we touched on briefly at the beginning. So uh, the key takeaway is without leaving MATLAB, you can acquire and analyze and visualize your data all in a single environment. And this um, saves time and enables uh, live analysis of your data. So now that we've finished the details of the presentation, I'd like to conclude by highlighting additional resources that are available. You can find data sheets, user stories, web-based demonstrations, technical liter literature, and documentation off the various product pages for the products that we discussed today. You may also request evaluation software by going to the product pages. In addition, you can find links to other recorded webinars at mathworks.com slash products slash DAQ. And you can find additional demos for Data Acquisition Toolbox at mathworks.com slash products slash DAQ slash demos. And there's a similar URL for uh, additional demonstrations for Instrument Control Toolbox. Uh, you can see that here on the screen. 
And then finally, if you want to uh, look at the different types of supported hardware for the various toolboxes, uh, you can go to uh, the supported hardware pages for each of the toolboxes. I'll show you quickly data acquisition toolbox. If you click on the data acquisition toolbox supported hardware page, uh, you'll get to the main supported hardware page where you will see uh, links for each of the vendors that we support. Um, if you look at National Instruments, for example, then you will see uh, all the, the supported hardware for uh, National Instruments. And you'll see there's a very long list of boards that are supported and some details about um, how you can work with those boards. So this concludes uh, the presentation portion of our webinar. Thank you for listening. 